Well, the question now, chat. Do you dare nuke? <laughs> I know some people were talking about it. Do people want to legitimately propose it to send it to a trade? I mean, I can give you an example. You are allowed to at least look at what someone like Jeremy Grant would get you. Looks like the vote's going to be no. I don't blame you for saving it. Um, like Grant and Beauchamp could land you Isaac Okoro. Uh, Dejounte Murray and Clint Capella. Kevin Herter's out there. You have to give up Trey Lyles. Mark Fultz. You have to give up Trey Mann. Grant Williams and Maxi Kleber. Cam Johnson, Duncan Robinson. Give up a first to get Bagley. Um, Got to be honest. Well, if you gave up Bassey, Jalen Williams is out there. But again, the only way you're allowed to do this right now is if you use the nuke. That is the only way. But... That is the type of deal that could be out there. Just so you know. And again, he's your most valuable asset in 83 overall. So, All right. Looks like no wood went out. We move on. Let's wrap up our first regular season. And we will uh, we'll see how it goes as your Lions are still 10 games over 500. And on a playoff pace, the Cincinnati Lions, because the Bengals were taken. So, we will see. Happy, oh god, I just turned 30 in this reality. Oof. Fucking oof. It's coming up soon. God damn. God damn. We will stop at the extension deadline. Yeah, I'm 355 million in the hole <laughs> after the nuke. So, uh, with that for contract extensions, there's nothing I can do except for Cork Maz, who's going to leave anyway. Uh, for you guys, there are some things you could do. Uh, Horton Tucker, I'd imagine you'd want to keep. Gordon Hayward, I'd imagine you'd want to let go. Uh, Miles McBride at 23, I'd imagine you'd want to keep as well. Any disagreement to signing the two young point guards? And letting go of Gordon Hayward. Any disagreement? I mean, I feel like that's a pretty straightforward move for you guys to bring back McBride and Horton Tucker. So. Any disagreement? Going once. Going twice. Sold. As I get into that fourth year. Got the bird rights on him as well. And he will be back, and then Miles McBride. You might as well get the term on him now, especially because he's going to keep getting better. Granted, the cap hit does go up as well, but he's also a very tradable option for you guys, and the money is not really too much of a concern right now. So, there you go. Whew. Funny thing is, both of us could very well be on our way to the playoffs, <laughs> which is just ridiculous, um, given the fact that we're expansion teams, but... Or some big names, and I traded all of mine to end up still with other big names and a crap load of first-round picks. If this ends in Season 1, by the way, I'm going to die laughing. If either one of us win in Season 1, it's going to be goddamn hilarious. Expansion teams in a year with really strong rosters. It's true. As the sound of St. Louis pushing to 50 wins in their expansion season. <laughs> and it only took us... Going $355 million into the red. That's all it took. No biggie. We're owned by a billionaire. That's a $20 bill to him. He'll be fine. Yeah, the fact I got the Aaron Fox is insane. Luka Doncic wins league MVP in 2024. Averaging almost 37 points. Rookie of the year. I can't believe it. <laughs> Wembenyama wins Rookie of the Year for the Spurs. Sixth Man of the Year, Christian Wood for the Lakers. Defensive Player of the Year, Nick Claxton of the Brooklyn Nets. Most Improved, Cincinnati's Jalen Duran. Average the double-double.
Clutch Player of the Year, Steph Curry. Which is hilarious that this is an award, by the way. Coach of the Year, Philadelphia's Nick Nurse. Executive of the Year, the Sounds, <laughs> Francis Gooden. I wonder why he won Executive of the Year. <laughs> he fucking landed the Aaron Fox in a trade. First team All-NBA, Doncic, Curry, Giannis, Embiid, and Ja. Your defensive team, Luca, Paul George, Giannis, Evan Mobley, and Claxton. And your all-rookie team, Wemby, Brandon Miller, Chet Holmgren, Scoot Henderson, and Mr. Osar Thompson. I love the scan for, or not even the scan, but I guess, yeah, kind of for Chet Holmgren. It's beautiful. So in the playoffs, number one seed St. Louis and Chats the fifth seed in the East, you'll play Cleveland. The number one seed. St. Louis Sound. Let's fucking go. Oh my god. 57 wins. The number one seed despite nuking the team. Let's fucking go. Oh my god. 32 and 9 at home, by the way. As again, for those who aren't familiar, of course, NBA now has the play in round. Uh, for the 7 through 10 seeds in each conference. Amazing. And then for you guys, uh, you ended up being the 5th seed in the East. More like because of nuking, probably. Let's be honest. That is, let's trade the Aaron Fox for Clay Thompson. Hey, there was another guy in the trade too. There was somebody else. As Fox is not 100% heading into the playoffs. Anthony Simons right there with them. What a weird team. What a weird, weird team. And then for you guys, it was Jeremy Grant leading the way, but obviously we'll be shortening your bench after those moves. What a weird season. Uh, let's get the confirmation here. Let's go through the play-in and find out who it's going to be. So the Dallas Mavericks who were the seventh seed, become the actual eighth seed. That is who I will play. Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks. Oh, fun. I can't wait to lose. Fuck. Oh, man. Denver, by the way, out in the playoff as well. That's a rough go. On the eastern side, it was Miami over New York, Milwaukee over Indy, and the Milwaukee Bucks have advanced to play the Philadelphia 76ers. As you get a look there at the full bracket. I get to play, what a fucking reward. I get to play Luka Doncic and the Mavericks as the eighth seed. Jesus Christ. Oh, what is it I do to the TA and NHL? Um, basically, I mean, basically a part of a feedback group, really. It's just like, hey, here's what I think. Here's what people in my community think. Here's what people at large think. Just so you guys know and have a direct line of communication. That's good what it is. Uh, for my St. Louis sound, Dante Exum was playing point. Jesus. I'm going to drop to a typical seven-man bench. So it's Fox, Simons, Harrison Barnes, P.J. Tucker, and Yusef Nurkic. With Mitch Robinson, Luke Kennard, and Brandon Clark coming off the bench. That works for me. Frank was saying don't change the bench at all. Um, for the record, if you guys were to go with like the traditional seven or eight man bench for the playoffs, this is what it would look like. It'd be Trey Mann, Contavious Caldwell Pope, Gordon Hayward, Jeremy Grant, and Jalen Duran. Do you want to keep it at 13 for the memes? People are saying keep it at 13. <laughs> Believe in the squad. You got Brown, Horton Tucker, Struess. I mean, what a team. Chat's going to meme it. I like it. Chat's going to meme it. I like it because why the hell wouldn't you like it at this point? This is uh, this is just meme-tastic at this stage, is it not? So the prediction is up. Let's take a look at Cleveland and Dallas to see our opposition. We will look at your opponents in the Cleveland Cavaliers first and foremost. 
Darius Garland, a point guard. Ricky Rubio, what a man. At shooting guard, Donovan Mitchell. We got Levert behind him. At forward, Isaac Okoro. We got Diallo behind him. Power forward, Evan Mobley. Shores Nyang there as well. And at center, Jared Allen. Good luck, chat. <laughs> Good luck. We're both in pretty rough spots, as it turns out. My opponents in the form of the Dallas Mavericks. The MVP, Luka Doncic. Seth Curry behind him. Kyrie Irving, who is currently hurt. At forward, Jonathan Isaac, who I traded to them. While well, Josh Green is injured. At power forward, Grant Williams, Maxi Kleber, Derek Jones. I traded them these two as well. <laughs> and at center, Rashawn Holmes, Bruno Fernando, and Derek Lively. Um, it's Luca, Kyrie, and their band of merry men right now. Uh, this is going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Season one, modern era, expansion teams. We are both in the playoffs. And Chats Cincinnati Lions kick it off against their in-state rivals, the Cleveland Cavaliers. As we get right back to the playoffs. We've seen a lot of playoff action tonight, and Cleveland will take game one convincingly. 123 to 102. As Jeremy Grant led the way with 17 points for you guys, playing just 27 minutes. <laughs> Gordon Hayward shot fucking one of five. Ridiculous. Donovan Mitchell, 37 points on the other side. That's insane. That is insane. We go game one. St. Louis plays their first ever home playoff game against Don Chich and the Dallas Mavericks. God help me. God help me. Well, at least we're keeping it competitive. 107 to 104, the St. Louis Sound. Take game one. 38 points for the injured Fox. 35 for Oh my god. Whew. It's a two man show. It's a two man show. God damn. All right. On the other side, 31 for Kyrie, 32 for Doncic, even Seth Curry. Seeing conflicting reports about abandoning the meme. We go down three, play a short bench. All right, game two. Lions looking to win. Actually, you know, it's being contested enough. We'll throw it to a vote. Will you drop it down to seven or will you meme? I will let you guys vote on it. Why not? There's enough of uh, enough of a conversation. Do you drop it to seven and be serious, or do you continue the meme? That is the question. What's it gonna be? It's a close vote. It is a close vote. Oh man, what's it gonna be? Gonna be what's it gonna be? And the answer it's very close. It's very, very close. And the final result. If it ends up in a tie, we go to a coin toss. Late vote for meme. Couple late votes for seven. Ends in a tie. Well, we're flipping a coin. Fuck's sake. Well, heads, seven. Tails, meme. You're going to seven. Congratulations. I didn't vote. That's your fault. You're going down to seven. That's how it works. You guys can't make a decision. You let the coin make a decision for you. Game two. Game two. The Battle of Ohio. Where either side could just be like, yeah, fuck it. 
Take it. <laughs> you can have it. Cleveland wins 118 to 104. Jeremy Grant picks up an injury in the defeat. And it's a 2-0 lead for the Cleveland Cavaliers. We go to game two, St. Louis and Dallas. Change it back. I'm not flip-flopping. I'm not flip-flopping. You guys made that decision. We stick to it. That's how it works. I'm running 17 million polls here. Over time. Oh, baby. The St. Louis Sound win in overtime. 148 to 147 off of 53 points from Fox. <sighs> Jesus. 60 points and a loss for Luka Doncic. Poor Luka. Oh, poor Luka. We go to game number three. Chats Cincinnati Lions expansion team against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Overtime and the Lions have their first win. 121 to 120. A playoff victory in Cleveland. Nearly impossible to even imagine. Regardless of the sport, not that long ago. And it's a big win for Cincinnati. Put it on the pan. Both of us winning those game twos in overtime. St. Louis looking to take a commanding... 3-0 lead as the series shifts to Dallas. It's a close game. And the Mavericks win 119 to 118. Nurkic fouled out. And it led to 18 rebounds for Isaac. 27 points for Kyrie. The Mavericks back in the series. Cincy looking to tie it up. Against Cleveland. Can they do it? Can they do it? The Cavaliers take game four. 107 to 97. Trey Mann led the way for you guys with 18 points, but it was 37 for Donovan Mitchell. The Cavs won away from the second round. By the way, you notice how Sacramento didn't make the playoffs after trading De'Aaron Fox? Didn't even make the fucking plan. <laughs> Game four. Game four. Can Dallas tie the series? Can Dallas tie the series? They led almost the whole way. And they win 128 to 121. Nurkic goes down injured. Lost despite 47 points from Fox. Kyrie dropped 51. That series is tied. Chat's asking for it, so fuck it. They go back to the meme to try to stay alive in the series. It's game five. Will their memes, in fact, only be dreams? Will they fall short? Or can they extend this series against the Cavs? The answer is the former. 126 to 111. The Cleveland Cavaliers advance behind 34 points from Donovan Mitchell. The Cincinnati Lions have been eliminated. What a run. Playoffs in their first season, you know? That's commendable. Jeremy Grant was the lead player. Has that monster contract. Jalen Duran played really well, too. I mean, he's definitely someone for you guys to build around. That was a really shrewd first pick. Uh, to find out or to find there. Um, but I don't regret taking Bradley Beal and what that kind of turned into. St. Louis has blown a 2-0 lead. Golden State has advanced over the Thunder. As the sound try to get back ahead here. And they do it. Or will the eight seed Mavericks who won the play in tournament take the lead? Jesus Christ. Get the first overall. First seed overall. We run into fucking Luka. Fuck me. <laughs> 48 points. 
Ah, uh, it had to be freaking Dallas, didn't it? It had to be. Lakers will play the Blazers. Dude, the higher seeds are falling like flies, except for Golden State. And Chicago advances over Atlanta. The higher seeds are falling like flies as I try to extend this series against the Mavericks, and it's not going to happen. The eight seed Dallas Mavericks eliminates the St. Louis Sound in six. 51 points from Luka. From playing round to second round, Dallas pulls off the upset and will play Golden State as neither of our teams advanced. For you guys, it's not that surprising. For me, that's that's kind of devastating, man. The injury to Yusef Nurkic completely turned that series around. 100%. And having P.J. Tucker at power forward certainly doesn't fucking help. Um, damn. So all I can say is damn. I mean, obviously, I'm very happy with how my team looks after one season. But... Yeah, I would have preferred a bit more. It'll be Philadelphia, Cleveland, Boston, Chicago, Golden State, Dallas, Los Angeles, and Portland. As Golden State will play Portland. LeBron and the Lakers fail. And Philadelphia will play Boston after both teams swept their second round opponents. Going to the NBA final in 2024. It caught me off guard because I forgot that they hand out the MVPs here. It's Golden State from the West with Steph Curry and Philadelphia from the East. Drop the confetti because they actually won this time. 40 points a game for Steph, by the way. It is Philadelphia. You watch. I talked all that shit about Philadelphia in the prior era, and they're going to win in the season one. Golden State and Philadelphia. The 76ers sweep Golden State in the final. That's how you know it's a video game. That's how you know. The Philadelphia 76ers have won. They finally get revenge for AI. 24 years later. The Philadelphia 76ers. Harden was in shape in the video. <laughs> the Sixers have done it. Congratulations. Led by Embiid and James Harden. And you're welcome to Tim Hardaway Jr. for dealing you over there. You're welcome. I was really hoping that was going to be Jerry, but it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Shout out to Danny Green, though. NBA champion Danny Green. And that is season one in the books. A wild season. Oh, don't show Dirk. Oh, I don't like thinking that Dirk's retired. LeBron James has retired. Don is Haslam. Oh, God, they all look so fucking old, don't they? And it's only amplified by going through the 80s, seeing these guys join. The, oh, God. Al Horford, Thaddeus Young, Mike Conley retires. Jim, Mike Conley's been around for that long already. That's insane. Pretty gay. Robin Lopez. <laughs> Rob, I can't wait to see Robin Lopez at age 65. He's going to be hilarious, especially if he still has the hair. We didn't really see the 2000s. I mean, I didn't bring that up cynical. You did. Nicholas Batum, JaVale McGee, Jeff Green, Danny Green, Patrick Mills. Sideshow Bob. Oh, my God. The Silver Fox. Goran Dragic. Danilo Gallinari. Oh, God. So many big retirements. Hall of Fame inductees, boy, I fucking wonder who was going to get inducted into the Hall of Fame. I'm going to induct him tomorrow. LeBron James. No, Udonis Haslam? Unbelievable. Jersey retirements. <laughs> of course, LeBron has his number retired with Miami, Cleveland, and Los Angeles. Udonis Haslam didn't get his number retired by Miami? Ain't that a bitch. Ain't that a bitch. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. League meetings. No new changes to come. So there we go to the draft lottery. Holy rockets, of course. 
Jesus. The fucking Thunder, the Spurs, the Rockets. The Spurs have the number one odds again. This lottery is a fucking shit show. Jesus Christ. And you thought that I pick hoard or that you guys were pick hoarding. The Spurs have one, seven, and nine. The Rockets have two and five. The Knicks have four and 16. The Thunder have 10, 11, and 13. Jesus Christ. Whew. Well, let's see how it plays out. I. <laughs> Poor San Antonio, the Utah Jazz have the number one pick. Oh, poor San Antonio. Oh, that's rough. So with that, I will have the 31st pick and the 29th, thanks to Memphis. Chat will have the 22nd overall pick. So again, 22nd for chat, 29 and 31 for my St. Louis sound. Holy fucking draft picks. One of them probably was top three protected, and it might have been the Jazz. God damn. Poor San Antonio. Well, with that, with that, and again, we didn't go with uh, a real life draft, uh, you know, for the upcoming year, because I didn't know which ones were out there, and if there would have been something fucking stupid. Granted, I could have edited it to fix it. It's more fun to have it be random players and to not know who to take. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. It is. It's not. It's fun, but it's also not fun to play NHL 23 and be like, season one, Connor Bedard. Like, it's fun because you get Connor Bedard, but it's not fun because where's the suspense? It's Connor Bedard. With that, we head to our first draft. Tiny Silver still here in 2024. The Utah Jazz. Now, obviously, we don't have to worry about these picks because we're not going to know any names now. Um, so we'll be able to get to the drafts faster. Unless we get trade offers and the Cincinnati Lions are available to make their first pick, but you do get trade offers. So again, there's no, oh, but this guy is on the board. You don't know who's on the board. So you could trade for Javon Carter and a first round pick from the Bulls in 2028. Try to get a higher pick. Uh, Ty Jerome and Dean Wade. Eh. Jose Alvarado and a first round pick. In 2028, Moritz Wagner in a 2028 first. Two first round picks from the Memphis Grizzlies, one in 26 and 27. Neither of them, exactly, you can't look at the board. It's, you gotta, you gotta go for it. You gotta go with your gut. Two first round picks from Memphis in 26, 27. Clint Capella, Linda Robinson, Terry Rozier in a second, John Collins, Kevin Herter. Rudy Gobert, Hachimura and Lewis, Norman Powell, a couple 30-year-olds, Dan Hammonds. This guy must have, was this guy just taken? This is the 15th overall pick. Dan Hammonds with an A- minus potential, allegedly. Oh, you got to give up another first, though. That's not worth it. That's not worth it at that point. It is top three protected. But you would get an A minus guard. He's a 72 at 22. And also, Julian Strother, the 29th overall pick this past year. He's not so hot, though. Uh, Nembard and McConnell, but you'd have to give up a first. Two first round picks from the Pelicans, one in 25 and one in 27. I have their 26. Chris Duarte in a first. So, clearly, you have the Bulls, 25. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty straightforward. Trade for picks. Keep your pick. Those are your two options, chat. You can trade for picks down the road. There's Chris Murray from last year's draft. who's not that bad. You can trade for picks down the road, or you can keep your pick and say, uh, see what's out there with the 22nd overall selection. Again, we got no way to check the board. We could start checking the board before the draft, but it's kind of fun to be like, well, you don't know what's out there. The pick could be anything. It could be a mystery box, which is exactly what the hell picks are in real life anyway. Uh, the Golden State picks were 26 and 27. 
Looks like the trade for picks might win. So you got, we'll go back through these. It is true that the Warriors made the finals, but will Steph Curry still be around? Will they be as dominant two years from now, three years from now? That's the question. <laughs> exactly. It could even be a boat. Oh, the mystery box. Two tickets to a crappy comedy concert. <laughs> All right, chat, we'll be making a trade. So you have your choice. Golden State, two first round picks. We'll go for whatever two uh, first round picks existed. Nolans. Nolans. With their 25th and 27th first round pick. Memphis with their 26 and 27 first round pick. And that's that. Who's it going to be? Who are you going to bank on to be bad in the future? Golden State, New Orleans, or Memphis? Who are you going to bank on being bad over the next two to three seasons? Again, the Golden State Warriors won the NBA title because, or no, they didn't. They made the final. Uh, Philadelphia. Sorry, it's, I'm not used to saying Philadelphia and winning. Super Bowl against the Patriots. I know. Who's chat going to bank on here? Right now, the Pelicans seem to be the favorite. You do have to give up your second round pick this year, too, but it's a second round pick. We know how much of a shot in the dark those are. Will it be the New Orleans deal? The answer looks to be yes. Your two picks this year. For the 2025 and 2027 first rounders from New Orleans. It's a done deal. It is a done deal. So the Pelicans get back-to-back -back picks. They take a dude named Isaac Mayo. And another guy, Omar Alvarez. So with that, the St. Louis Sound are on the clock. And get a trade offer. Okay. Picks 29 and 31. You're out of your fucking mind. Mark Leonard, 24th overall pick. Mark Leonard, he's a B minus. Get the fuck out of here. Jose Alvarado. Memphis offering two future first round picks. Tough to turn that down. Especially when I have another pick coming up at 31. Very tough to turn down two future first round picks for a late first rounder. I would argue impossible to turn down. Two future first rounders with the Pelicans, no thanks. Mm. I mean, it's a risk, but honestly, like, so here, here's the logic behind taking the Memphis deal. Jalen Johnson. Or Golden State. The logic is, oh, well, they might be late picks. This pick already is. But in the future, they could be better picks. And I'll tell you what, right now, I'm going with Golden State. 2026 first rounder, top three protected, which means I could end up with their first rounder in 27 and 28 unprotected. Steph Curry is not going to be around too much longer. 29th overall pick for two futures from Golden State. That is the biggest fucking no-brainer I have ever seen, even if they end up with Michael Jordan Jr. with this damn pick. Uh, that is a no-brainer. There's a backup protection there, too. We're fine. Yeah, Golden State, you got a deal. You got a deal. They take a dude named Aaron Boyd. I'll have to see how good he is. New Orleans takes Pandasis Alexandris. Can you believe he's from Greece? Sound back on the clock at 31. My first ever draft pick. Will it be Alonzo Peterson? I mean, I might as well check his... Okay, his potential doesn't appear to be that good. And I don't have anybody that's like, oh, yeah, dead set potential. I mean, Robin Cage, 20 years old, C minus. He's a B. <sighs> I mean, based off of rating, there's Johan Eklund. He's got to be Swedish, right? Hell yeah. Euros Golob from Slovenia. Slovenia number one. I might just go off of name, to be honest. RJ Leonard, Euros Golob. There's Alton Morris, Lewis Jeffries, Derek Mason, Max Neal, Arif Mancis, Argento D'Angelo. <laughs> His fucking name is Argento. 
The Sergeant Argento D'Angelo. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, God. Do I go with the Italian or the Swede? Oh, God. I feel like I have to go with the Swede. Like I said, at this point, I'm going off a name, man. Fucking Argento. Ming Yu Kim. You're fucking terrible. Oh, the Italian or the Swede? <sighs> Eklund was 21. Argento's 22. Same position. <sighs> the Slovenian's not a bad option either. What the hell is he, a center? What the hell is the Slovenian? Is a point guard. Uros Golob. What was the reef man see? Is Turkey? Yeah. <sighs> I feel like I gotta go for the Swede. Although Uros Golob's not that bad. But, uh. Man, Eklund's not expected to be drafted that high. That's a little bit scary. But I don't have second round picks. This is now my only pick in the draft. We're going for the Swede! Johan Eklund. Let's go, baby. Take the Swede. That's right. And that is it for the drafts. What an exciting draft. First overall pick was Christos Balidis to Utah. There was a 78 overall guy, Drew Hicks, that went to the Pistons. Gilberto Conover. Oh, man, they got a point guard. Oof. Oof. Any other crazy high overalls? Looked like it star uh, started to drop a little bit. Boy to the 73. 72! boy, Johan. boy. Peterson was a 76! Fuck! And he went to the Sixers. <laughs> he was a little bit better than my scouts uh, pretended that he was. Fuck me. Uh, Golob was a 72. He went to the Suns. And Argent Argento was a 72 as well, so I really couldn't have gone wrong. Who'd you miss out on at 22? Uh, the Pelicans took a 73 point guard, Isaac Mayo. And then they took a center right after that. So we got to the rookie signings. Uh, you guys, LOL, negative 60 million in cap room. Me, LOL, never give 62. Eklund, how good are you? <laughs> Always trust the Swedes. Always. Always go with the Swede. That's right, Johan. That's fucking right. It's only a B plus, but I love him. We're signing you. Welcome, Johan. Holy team and player options. Okay, let's look at chat first. Obviously, you'll be picking up the Duran offer. 27-year-old Bruce Brown. You have a $23 million option. Uh, KCP picked up his option. And then there's the 23-year-old Marjan Beauchamp at a B. So your big question, Bruce Brown, do you keep him? Do you let him go? Um, obviously, hey, you got to think about the money, the financials. What do you want to do? What do you want to do with Bruce Brown, the 80 overall, 27-year-old? Uh, for me, Luke Kennard. Uh, you're not bad, but I'm going to drop you. Uh, we're keeping Christian Braun. Dropping P.J. Tucker. Actually, Tucker had a player option. Fuck me. Why didn't you retire, P.J.? <laughs> and then uh, Fournier, I'm going to drop too. But yeah, I'm going to drop Luke Kennard. He's not bad, but as a shooting guard, I have Simons there. I don't really have anybody behind him, but that's just money that I want to have available in free agency if need be. So the vote for Brown... Not a very active one. People are falling asleep, man. <laughs> it is getting late. It is getting late. It looks like it's going to be a drop. We can put Brown on the board. I mean, you got to figure, he was on your team all season last year, and you didn't trade him because the block was wide open. As chat has elected to drop Bruce Brown. So, there we go. Uh, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George have both opted out. In L.A., Drew Holiday, OG, out in Toronto. Okay. Be an interesting free agent class here then. We get the qualifying offers. Nothing to worry about there. So we will pick things up tomorrow with this free agent class. 
featuring a lot of old men. But are any of the old men worth the risk? That is the question. And we'll find out. And also, OG is, is there as well, who's only 27. And Malik Monk. You never know. Could be interesting. And Tyrese Maxey. Yeah, but he's an RFA. Again, RFAs are still so tough to land in this game. So, there we go. Season one in the books. The draft in the books. Not bad for a spur-of-the-moment expansion idea.